just, it flicks in so quick. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Alrighty, everyone. Today's a special one. If you can believe it, today's video is a first impression ride of the Kawasaki Ninja 400. Why do I say if you can believe it? Well, I've trash talked the Ninja 400 publicly on a video I made about a year ago where I said it was the premium mediocre option for beginner riders. Um, and today, we're going to take it out on the road and, uh, you know, see if it is truly the premium mediocre bike that everyone thinks that it is. Before we get started, though, uh, why do I have a Ninja 400? That's a great question. Uh, this is actually a bike that I've purchased. I've purchased it because we are giving it away for free. So in case you missed it, we posted up a video a while back where we launched our triple bike giveaway. Uh, we are currently taking pre-registrations for it in case you guys check the link below, see how you can get entered to win uh, along with a CB650R and a DRZ400. This bike will be given away to one lucky winner. Um, and by that I mean every person is going to get one bike. One person isn't going to get three motorcycles because I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. My garage is so full of bikes right now, it's actually a problem. Um, so yeah, today we're going to take this bike out, have some fun with it, and give like super baseline initial impressions of what I think of it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before jumping on the bike, uh, first impressions on how it looks. You know, I think it's a pretty sharp looking motorcycle. I think this uh, all black and the green and black are probably my favorite colorways. I'm not super fond of the orange one, um, but I think in person, you know, this, this little beak that it has here for the front looks pretty sharp. Uh, I don't think it looks as good as the R3, but we're going to do a full, you know, Ninja 400 and R3 comparison video. I think because we have the both bikes still, uh, definitely want to do that. Um, also, in case you've missed that, we have given away the R3 and the SV650. I've got two new owners for them, all lined up ready to go. But I chatted with the guys, and they said that it was cool if I uh, took the bikes out, did one last video with each of them, and then shipped it off to them. So we're all good there. Um, the, the swing arm here looks... Well, it's just a rectangle, isn't it? And then Kawasaki's probably like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So this is just a solid little rectangle here for the swing arm, which is kind of funny. Um, but I think overall a successful looking package. Um, I think that it's uh, a little bit more bulky than the R3. You can notice right here it's kind of wider and chunkier than the R3. So if you like something that's a little bit thinner, uh, you might not like this bike. Once you're in motion, it's not so bad. Most Kawasaki's are like this. Uh, I've ridden a ZX6 uh, on several occasions on the track. I've ridden a ZX10 on the track. I've ridden a ZX10 on the road. And they're all kind of like this. They're all a little bit fatter, a little bit wider around the fairings right here. Uh, I don't know why Kawasaki makes them like that, but they do. One thing that I like about this bike, actually, right off the bat, is the analog tachometer. I think that's a great touch. I love analog tachs. I think more bikes need to have them. It's a big reason why I love my Daytona's uh, analog tachometer. And upon startup, it does a cool little dash all the way to the top, which is cool. You know, I think even though we're moving to TFTs and digital displays, I love an analog tachometer. I think the ideal situation for me is a digital display with an analog tach. That's perfect. Kind of like how Porsche does it. In sitting on the bike, it definitely is a lot more comfortable than the R3. The ergonomics are not as leaned over. Actually, this bike, the ergonomics feel almost identical to the last generation R3, a bike that I owned in 2015. Um, you get that same, I'm about six foot with a 32 inch inseam and you get that same like really planted feel. It's a super lightweight motorcycle and the bars fit like right to your hands right here. It's really upright actually. Um, the seat is only, I think about 30 inches or 29.2 inches or something. It's really low and anyone could ride this bike really. Um, I think anyone could. So let's, uh, let's get a little startup actually. Let you hear how it sounds. So 399 CC parallel twin engine. Sounds exactly like you'd expect. That kind of lawnmowery, like kind of buzzy nature that all these little engines have. They all sound super similar. Um, like in the GSX 250 and the R3, they, they all sound pretty much exactly the same, which, you know, they, they kind of built them to a price and it's, it's a very utilitarian engine, so that makes sense. 
Uh, but one thing I have noticed is the uh, Ninja 400 has a better induction sound than the R3. So when you take off in first gear like this, let me put my visor down. You'll hear it as I as I roll on the throttle. You'll hear some of that induction noise, hopefully on camera. So it really kind of, I don't know, it, uh, you definitely hear like it honking with air, which I really like, that's a great feature. The brakes are surprisingly good. Uh, most motorcycles in this class have pretty uh, wooden feeling brakes, but this one is definitely one of the better ones that I've felt. And I gotta say, it's a fun bike to ride, man. It flicks over super quick. It actually flicks a little bit quicker than the R3, I think. These little bikes are always really fun to kind of hustle down twisty roads. So initial impressions is that, you know, it's a really fun bike and it's surprisingly capable. Um, I think the relationship between throttle and engine is a little more raw than the R3. Um, I find that maybe it's because it has a little bit extra torque and when you crack it open, you can definitely feel it a little bit more, but it, uh, it definitely feels a little bit more immediate than the R3. And weirdly enough, even though the R3 has sharper ergonomics in terms of you're more leaned over on the R3. Um, so far, I, I have to check, you know, back to back with the R3, but this feels like a sportier bike to me so far. It seems to be set up a little bit stiffer, a little bit more sporty. Um, I find the, the chassis to be just a little bit sweeter, honestly, which is, I, I didn't expect it to, but, you know, it definitely feels quite sporty and quite fun. This bike is a favorite among track day enthusiasts because of that chassis, because of its nimble feeling. Uh, Lots of people race these in the ultralight category and for CMRA here in Texas, along with the R3. But the thing I want to note so far in my initial impressions is the, the, the margin and difference between something like this and the R3 is like a, it's like 10%. It's like there's, other than the little bit of extra torque and the little bit of extra kind of flicky feeling that it has, and the seating position that's a little bit more comfortable for longer trips. That's about it. Um, the bikes are so similar uh, because they're both parallel twins. They're both set up this way, designed this way um, for that beginner rider or that just someone who wants this uh, small displacement sport bike, you know, it, uh, th they feel super similar. So sometimes people get into their own heads about, oh, should I get the Ninja 400 or the R3? Having owned an R3 before and now having owned the next generation R3 as well, I think that they're, man, it's crazy how there's not a whole lot that separates those two motorcycles. Yeah, it has this really pleasant way of kind of flicking. I would love to take this thing on the track and see what it can do. The guys that race and ride the lightweight and the small displacement category on the track, they swear by these things, man. Everybody's copping up Ninja 400s to do track days with. And it's a fun bike to ride, you know? Again, this kind of goes back to my theory that motorcycles are like dogs. They're all good in some way. They're all, you know, fluffy and cute and you can pet them and they're nice. Um, but yeah, I, I, this is a really enjoyable experience, I will say. I'm liking it more than I thought I would, honestly. I 
wish the gears were a little bit longer. They gear these small little bikes really short to make it feel like they accelerate a little bit quicker, but I could do with the longer second gear. Then again, maybe I would hate it if I was in traffic and I'm like, man, wish second gear wasn't so long. Let's do a little acceleration test, shall we? Yeah, it pulls just about the same as the R3. I know it's a little bit quicker, but the big difference that you feel in the power is uh, low in the rev range. In the mid range, you feel that extra grunt from the you know, 70 some odd cubes that it has over the R3. But yeah, it's a really pleasant, enjoyable motorcycle to flick down a twisty road, I gotta say. It's pretty good. It's very confidence inspiring. I, I like it a lot. And I kind of figured this would happen. Like a lot of people, you know, they, they, they applaud the Ninja 400. They really like the Ninja 400. And it, it's a good bike, you know? Um, I still feel like it's a sort of lazy choice as your first motor. It's like not a bad bike, you know, by any means. It's a, it's a great bike. Um, but it's like choosing Chipotle for your dinner. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, you know exactly what you're going to get. It's going to be good. You're going to be full. It's going to be tasty. But, you know, if you want something a little bit with a little more panache, uh, there's definitely cooler options than the Ninja 400. But, I mean, this will get you to where you want to go, man. This bike is pretty sweet, I got to say. I'm impressed by it. It's, it's, it's better than I thought it would be. For sure, better than I thought it would be. But maybe because my expectations were so low, it, uh, it allowed me to have a better relationship with this motorcycle. And it does the same trick as the R3 in that, you know, going down the road, it feels like a much more expensive, much more, you know, bigger bike than it actually is. If you saw this thing going down the road, you wouldn't think it's a small displacement sport bike, which is a cool trick that they're pulling off nowadays with these bikes. Wow, it flicks in really quick. <laughs> like, super quick. Like, look, you look right here, super light, you just, pow, like, it's right there. Wow, it flicks in super fast. <laughs> then again, I was riding a DRZ 400 yesterday, so that's probably why I'm like, wow, this thing just flicks so fast. I think if you're a beginner rider, there's like, oh man, you're, you're in such a great spot with one of these. I don't think you'd have a bad time at all. But again, between the R3 and the 400, such small differences that if you wanted one over the other based on how it looks, I would definitely recommend doing that, not sticking to one over the other. But wow, this riding experience is actually, it's pretty good. Uh, this model does come equipped with ABS, so we can't uh, do any fun stuff like slide the rear wheel around or anything like that. Yeah, what a cool little bike, man. <laughs> yeah, I think it just provides you this like, introduction to sport bike riding that is awesome like you wouldn't have any issues owning this bike and learning all the fundamentals of sport bike riding you could have this for your first kind of six months of learning the ropes and riding on the street and figuring it out and then afterwards you could also you know take it out to the track learn with it get good with it keep it for a good year two years really understand it really get really good with riding and then move up to something else and That'll provide you all you need to learn about sport bike riding. So yeah, overall, I'm, I'm impressed with this thing, man. Honestly, I, I like it more than I thought I would. It's a really sweet ride. Um, I can definitely see why, in certain people's perceptions, it would win shootouts between the R3, because uh, it does provide, you know, a, a different experience than the R3 in that it has a little bit of extra torque in the mid-range and it just, it flicks in so quick. Uh, it's a lot of fun. But with that being said, let's get into the garage. I asked the folks on Patreon to submit a couple questions to me. And uh, we'll answer them and have some fun with the bike. So see you guys there. Alrighty guys, we're now in the garage answering a few questions I received about the Ninja 400 on Patreon. It seems like people are a little bit more excited about the CV650. We didn't get quite as many questions, but that's okay. We'll work with what we've got. So the first question comes from Austin and he asks, does it sound like a lawnmower, LOL? Um, it's sort of lawnmower-esque. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, Parallel Twins do get a bad rap for sounding like really lawnmower-y. 
I mean, it, it does it does kind of sound like a lawnmower. Um, but once you get it up in the revs and you're kind of riding it and you're like actually, you know, using it, it's not that bad. Um, it's not the most pleasant sound in the world, but it does rev out. It is fun. Like, I don't know of a lawnmower that revs to 11,500 RPM personally, but um, you know, this one does. <laughs> Uh, Steven asks, why don't you like it? So uh, I think this is something that, so I made a video about a year ago uh, titled like, you know, what's every, everything wrong with the Ninja 400. And basically the, the point that I was trying to make in that video is that although this is a good bike, it's a great bike for anyone looking to get into motorcycling. It's a great bike for anyone trying to do small displacement sport bike stuff. Um, I felt that it was sort of like the easy way out. It was the premium mediocre option. It's like, you just, you, you pick the 400 because you're like, mm, screw it, I don't want to think about this decision anymore. And that's the point I was trying to make is that I feel like the Ninja 400 is a lazy choice, but a good choice. Kind of like the Chipotle thing I was saying in the vlog. So it's not that I don't like it. I, I just think there are more interesting motorcycles that you could buy for your first. But this is coming from a guy who chose a Yamaha R3 and I literally chose it in the same kind of way. I was like, mm, I want a bike. I did like, a weekend's worth of research maybe, and I was like, that seems like a good option, and I just went with it. I didn't think too much about it. John asks, how does it handle consider it being a lower displacement slash light bike? Um, it handles really well. Uh, the suspension on the Ninja 400 is actually a little bit stiffer than the R3, and so it feels super pointy and flicky in corners, which is super fun. Uh, as someone who's done a lot of track days, I feel like I understand now why people get on this motorcycle and they're like, oh, like this would be perfect sort of out of the box to just like, you know, flick around a racetrack. But um, I think that's the thing really. It's just because it weighs a good 60, 70 pounds less than your traditional 600 Super Sport. It just feels so light and flickable and nimble and it's real pokey. Uh, that's the way I would, it feels like the front end just wants to just do that, you know, and, which is really great. That's what you want in a bike. Uh, Robert asks, why did you pick the normal Ninja 400 over the Naked Z 400? This channel seems to love the Naked bikes. Um, well, it's because we've done a lot of Naked bikes so far. And uh, we did the FZ07, the SV650, we're doing the CB650R now. Um, I like showing that, you know, fully fared bikes like the Ninja 400 are a great option too. There's benefits to having fully fared. And because you guys chose this one, um, I put it up as a vote and you guys picked this one over all the other ones we had. Um, we could have maybe, you know, decided between this and the Z400, but I feel like the Ninja 400 is a lot of people, you know, think about this bike, about their first one, and I get a, I get at least, like, at, at least four or five questions a week about the Ninja 400 specifically, either on YouTube or on my Instagram and stuff like that, so it's definitely a bike that people think about a lot, so it is important to talk about the Ninja 400 and to show it off, too. Mark says, I love that bike, man. I was looking for one this year as my first bike, but wasn't any around cheap enough. I got a 08 CBR 125. So assuming since you went with a 125, you're probably in Europe because we, I don't think we sell those here in America because there's not really a market for them. Um, but CBR 125, great bike. It's gonna get you where you wanna go, probably on that A1 license or something like that. Yeah, it's a sweet bike. Uh, this, this wasn't a question, but I, I, this bike is cool. Christopher asks, it will sound much better with a slip on by Leo Vince. <laughs> I agree. How nimble and comfortable is it? Um, it's, like as I mentioned before, it's super nimble, super flickable, and surprisingly comfortable. Uh, this isn't as aggressive as the R3, and so I feel like I'm much more upright. I'm in that classic kind of like beginner sport bike rider pose, that rider triangle that's super comfortable and upright. Um, yeah, it's, it's super, super comfortable. Uh, Christopher says, how good is it on a track day? So I haven't taken it out on the track. It's got all of 45 miles on it. I bought it five days ago, so have not taken it out on the track. I would love the opportunity to take it out on the track before we have to give it away. Um, it's a little risky because I would hate to, to, to bend the bike uh, that's not mine on a, you know, that, that'd be bad. But I am fairly confident that if I can take a Daytona around the racetrack for lap after lap after lap and not wreck it, I could probably do that with the 400 as well. But you never know, you never know. Um, so I don't know how good it is on the track. And then Christopher asks, is it good on the highway? It's surprisingly good on the highway. It's better than the R3 because it uh, has that little bit extra grunt in the mid range, extra torque. Um, the fairings do a really good job of buffeting the wind around you. It's super comfortable going 65, 70 miles per hour. It, no issues whatsoever. 
Thomas asks, do you think Kawasaki will ever rise above their present day stigma of being the least interesting of the big four and kind of just a meh manufacturer in general? I kind of think Suzuki is the least interesting. Honestly, I know that's a controversial opinion. Well, then again, you can make the case that Honda is the least interesting because they do make the quote unquote boring bikes that are just like very corporate, sterile, kind of just, you know, very capable, but not very interesting. Uh, I think Kawasaki, you know, they make a fun lineup. They have the, the Z900, they got the ZX10, uh, they, they make the H2. So I don't think Kawasaki is the, the least interesting of the big four. Um, but, you know, the, this class of bike, if this is all you're looking at, it can come across as not that interesting. So I think I understand what you're saying there, but I, this bike is actually pretty fun and interesting. I don't think it's that bad. Christopher says, Stigma, never heard of it. Ninja H2 1000R and Carbon Edition, go Kawasaki. Ninja 400 best the competition on the track. So I guess he was answering Thomas there. And, and yeah, I agree, Kawasaki makes the H2. So that's kind of like, you know, the, the final word and if they're interesting or not. They make a supercharged leader bike. That's pretty interesting. Christopher also asks, when Yami puts the mods onto that Ninja, everyone will want it. Best beginner bike that you may just never get rid of, LOL. I agree. I think that the Ninja is a bike that you could easily buy and then just keep forever as a track bike, as a commuter bike. Um, makes a ton of sense in your garage. But if you're limited on space or you only want one bike, uh, I would probably not get this one. This is a little too, uh, focused in one area to be your only bike ever. But um, if you have extra room in your garage for two, maybe three bikes, this could easily find its way into your stable. I know plenty of guys who have leader bikes, but also have something like this for the track specifically. Um, so yeah, those are the questions I got about the Ninja 400. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Again, we are giving away this motorcycle along with the Honda CB650R and the Suzuki DRZ400. Click the link below to find out how you can get registered to win. Uh, it's gonna be really exciting. Three people are gonna be getting a email or a phone call from me uh, later in 2020, in February, something like that. Uh, you'll have the official start and end period in the link below. Um, by the time this video comes out, I think, or maybe not, I don't know. I'm kind of running by the seat of my pants here. I don't have my calendar out in front of me, but click the links below. It'll have all the information you need to find out what's going on right now. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later.